everyone saying in 2024 that is different than in 2023? And why does it matter to flagging intercessors? In today's video, we're going to talk about what God is doing and how we are supposed to respond as worshipers. I'm Andrea York with Catch the Fire Worship Flags, and today we're talking about what God is doing in 2024 and what we need to do to align with the word as flagging worshipers. So first off, what was he doing in 2023 that's going to be different in 2024? So in 2023, it was all about preparation and foundation, building that strong foundation. It was, I think, in preparation for what's coming. We saw a lot of shaking and the anti-woke agenda, and we saw uh, churches kind of struggling to find where their identity is, what they were going to be doing. I don't know if that was true. Your church is definitely true in my church and in the environment that I'm at. And I was ta I've been talking with a lot of fire catchers and that was kind of what the, the consensus was around particularly the global church, because I'm part of a global network of prophets. And uh, we've been talking about this, what is God doing? And it was a lot of the prep work. It was laying the foundations. It was having a revelation of who God is, his glory, his holiness. In terms of just like how that affected worshipers and flagging worshipers, I could see what was happening uh, for you. You guys were aligned with that word because I was selling a lot of our names of God collection, worship flags, the names of God worship flag. I was selling a lot of the revelation of God worship flags in that collection. And it was kind of just like this understanding and making it sure that our foundation is built on his glory, on his holiness, that it is nothing about ourselves, that it is he who is the victorious one and getting in alignment with him. Uh, so that was in 2023. You've probably been hearing it. There's going to be a lot of warfare. Yeah, that's true. That is absolutely true. And so as a flagging uh, intercessor, what do we do? Well, we enter into warfare. This is not going to be your typical spiritual battles. These are going to be where you need to be aligned. And there's going to be only one way that as believers and as worshipers that we're going to be able to stand at the end of this. I think that in this season of warfare, it's going to take out a lot of Christian leaders. It's going to take a lot of longtime Christian ministers, those that have been working in ministry, maybe not in paid ministry or in a platform ministry, but those that have become disillusioned with what God is doing because there's going to be such a shaking and there's going to be such warfare that's happening. So it's going to frustrate and then there are going to be some that are just not in alignment. They're not getting it. And so for as flagging worshipers, uh, as intercessors with flags, we really need to step up and understand that this is going to be happening and declare um, the warfare, that the battle belongs to the Lord, that we do warfare, that we've actually been given weapons that are not carnal. They are super supernatural in nature. Now we talk a lot about weapons of warfare as worshipers and flaggers in particular. We know the importance and the impact that worship flags has on an atmosphere and in doing warfare. That's going to increase. And so if you are in a church that doesn't have or allow worship flag, that's okay. Not everybody is. It's still a pretty niche market. Uh, worship in your home. Make sure that you are worshiping wherever you can. If you live in an area that you can do it outside, fantastic. Go to a park, go wherever in your home. If you have the space, fantastic. I personally don't have a space right now. It's Canada. We are the coldest. It's I think it's going to be this year. It's minus 10 degrees Celsius, which is cold for my area. And so obviously I'm not going to be outside. So where I will go, I can go to my church. Even I was even doing this before I attended a church that had worship flags. So I, I could go after hours or like during the week and worship. They didn't mind that. Uh, I would also even even go to rec centers when there was gymnasiums that was free. I was like, hey, can I just use the space for, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it was free for. And generally they let you. So don't make that an excuse as to why you can't step out and actually start doing warfare in the spirit with your worship flags. So there's going to be a lot of worship warriors. The Lord is calling up worship warriors to stand up. And we're going to talk about what flags I think that you need in part two. So stay tuned for that. Um, the second thing that I think that the Lord is saying in 
2024 is that we need to get into alignment. Again, this kind of follows from 2023. We really need to get into the alignment with his heart and know we need discernment. We need greater discernment. So be praying for discernment this year because it is going to be exercised. Scripture tells us that we actually increase and get better discernment by just through sheer practice. Well, you're gonna get a lot of practice this year. So uh, put your discerning cap on at all times. We wanna see, there's gonna be a lot of shaking. Some of it's God, some of it is not God. But we need to be aware that God is actually in a lot of the shaking that's gonna be happening and a lot of the warfare. He's going to allow it to happen because he wants his purposes to come forth. And so um, just because something is hard, don't pass it off as that's not God or that's the enemy, really sit with the Lord, be in alignment with him so that you understand. It is the year of Romans 12, 1. Therefore, my brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to him. This is your spiritual act of worship. Then you will be able to know and approve God's will, his perfect, pleasing will. We are only going to know his perfect and pleasing will if we offer our bodies as living sacrifices. So we need to be in alignment with him. And number three, it is going to be all about intimacy and encounter. If you do not have intimate encounters with the Lord, you will not stand. This will take you out. I cannot stress this enough. We have to prepare. We have to be disciplined. We have to be pursuing that relationship at all costs because it is the only way that we are going to be able to not just advance. I actually believe that even in the stand place of warfare that we are going to advance, but not everybody is going to advance. It will depend on your ability and your pursuit of his heart in intimacy. And so what does that mean for worshipers and what can you do to prepare? Stay tuned for part two. Thank you.